The learning cycle. Consider, construct, confirm. This is a method of designing lessons that comes from a constructivist philosophy and uses a more inquiry-based pedagogy. And broken down to the essentials, constructivism is really about how the brain acquires, stores, and utilizes new information. And in this, understanding constructivism can be applied to any subject and any age classroom. So I've created this process that I call Consider, Construct, Confirm to describe how to develop lessons in this manner. And I like the name in part because it's good alliteration and nice and easy to remember. So the learning cycle begins with the consider phase of the lesson or sequence of lessons. And this might involve thinking prompts, engaging stories, questioning, demonstrations, and so on. This is nothing new to teaching, but one aspect of the consider phase that is often overlooked is to purposefully engage students in exposing their prior knowledge about a topic. Too often, teachers skip this step and simply use the attention grabber to introduce a topic and tell the students what they're going to experience. Without exposing the prior knowledge, you've embarked on a linear approach to teaching and eliminated the cyclical nature of learning and cycling back at the end of the lesson to what they knew at the beginning. And we'll explore that more as we go. But first, let's consider a question and look at an example. So where does most of the mass come from in a tree? The soil or the air? If your answer was the soil, you'd be in agreement with most people. A study of MIT science graduates confirmed this answer, except it's false. The answer is that most of the mass of a tree, the carbon atoms, come from the carbon dioxide the plant absorbs from the atmosphere during photosynthesis. Many people have the false impression about this topic because their lived experience tells them that you put plants in the soil you water them, and then they get bigger. They must be pulling their mass from the soil. What we truly know is what we've learned from lived experience. That's the knowledge we own. The knowledge we rent is the information told to us, but not experienced. Think of all the information you learned or heard and forgot in school. You rented it because it wasn't taught to you in the context of what I call the learning cycle. It was taught to you in a more linear fashion. The teacher assumed you did not know anything about a topic, told you the correct information about the topic, and then assumed you would come out the other end of the equation with said knowledge, nice and simple and ineffective. Every person has experience in the world and therefore has preconceived ideas about topics based on their lived experience. Nobody's a blank slate. Students are not empty vessels awaiting new knowledge. Their vessel is full of knowledge, though it might be incorrect. This prior knowledge is difficult to change. Even something totally foreign to them gets equated to a lived experience in the form of a metaphor. Those MIT students were told the right answer at one point in their schooling about photosynthesis and where plants get carbon dioxide. But it did not coincide with their lived experience. It was also possibly presented to them outside of any bigger context. So, it was an isolated factoid of information. After the test, the taught knowledge faded away and the lived experience knowledge came back like mildew bleeding back through a fresh coat of paint in a damp bathroom. Teaching in a process that incorporates the learning cycle can help to mitigate this problem and help students to turn that rented knowledge into owned knowledge. The learning cycle continues with the construct phase of the lesson. This is what you think of as the actual activity, the lecture, the demonstration, and so on. And in what way can you provide students a way to deepen their understanding and to build meaning? Or in other words, begin to own it. And this is done through actively engaging the students with things such as cooperative learning, authentic learning, project-based learning, minds-on learning, and so on. 
I use the phrase minds-on purposefully instead of hands-on. Minds-on can be hands-on, but hands-on is not always minds-on. Minds-on asks the students to ask questions and ponder and so on. Hands-on could be simply following chemistry lab instructions, but not knowing why. It might be active and engaging, because there might be the potential for an explosion of some kind. You know, what more could a teenage chemistry student want? But it doesn't require any construction of meaning. To construct knowledge, students need to become active learners by the facilitation of the teacher and engaged in scholarly participation in that process. For this to occur, this requires more than passive reception of information. The last phase of the learning cycle, and this is the feedback loop that completes the cycle, is the confirm phase. This is the time that the teacher purposefully guides students in wrestling with the cognitive dissonance between what they thought initially about a topic and what they experienced in the construct phase. If they began with correct assumptions, these were confirmed. If they began with incomplete information, more was added. If they began with misconceptions, the act of dealing with this difference is when the, the student transitions from renting information to owning that information. And if you do not facilitate this last portion of the learning cycle to deal with their cognitive dissonance, which can be done through traditional testing or exams, performance assessments, authentic assessments, project-based learning, simple discussions, even a well-placed lecture could do this. But if you don't do this last phase of the learning cycle, taking them back to a comparison of their initial ideas, the cycle is never completed. And if the confirming phase is skipped, then oftentimes their experienced knowledge wins out in the brain in the long run. This is what happened to those MIT graduates regarding the plant mass. They might have done well on the test because they had the rented knowledge, but in learning it, the confirming was never done, and so once they moved past the test, the old knowledge faded back into place, and the new knowledge faded away, and it was not owned. It was rented. So let's put this into an example. Consider the typical cell lab in which students look at a simple aquatic plant called Elodia. Almost everyone who took high school or middle school biology completed this lab or something similar. Constructed in the linear fashion, students enter the class and the teacher tells them what they will learn, tells them about the cells, the makeup of all living things. She shows them pictures of cells, demonstrates how to get the sample, make the slide, and operate the microscope. Students draw pictures in their lab notebook. And often, these pictures look more like the diagram used to introduce the lab than the actual object in the microscope. I know this because I've graded many of these. At the end, she asks, did you see the cell and the nucleus, the cell membrane and the cell wall? They say yes. If she asks if they could see the mitochondria, like the one in the picture, many would say yes to this as well. They can't, by the way. I call this the tell, show, and retell model of teaching. We've gotten really good at this. I was really good at this for a long time. It's a really good model for short-term memorization of the right answer for a test. Now let's consider the same exact lab procedure, but now in the context of the learning cycle. Instead of telling the students what they will see, the teacher uses probing questions to access their prior knowledge about what makes up living things, and what is inside those living things. Then she sends them on their way to experience seeing what those things might be. But instead of sending them into the lab with a short-term memorization of her answer, she is sending them in with their preconceived answer based on their prior lived experience. During the lab process, the teacher is still actively involved in making sure the students are seeing actual cells and not things like air bubbles. Since the students don't know what they are supposed to see, they aren't going to guess at what the teacher wants them to see. And they are going to actually draw in their notebook what they honestly see. It might be very similar to the expected answer, but it might not be either. It is authentic, however. So, when do they actually learn the right answer about cells? 
Now is when the teacher steps in and actually teaches, though of course by facilitating their inquiry she was teaching all along. The confirm phase involves the teacher providing a means for the student to compare what they saw in the microscope to what they already thought they knew about cells. Instead of lecturing up front about the cells, she lectures on the back end of the lesson. Instead of taking notes on a blank piece of paper, they are making corrections and additions to their lab report they completed while looking at the cells. In this process, they have to compare the accepted science answer about cells with their prior knowledge and their lived experience in the lab. By doing this, you are completing the learning cycle and students are constructing new meaning about the nature of cells based on a new lived experience. This type of reflective activity built into the curriculum as a normal part of classroom procedure is essential for making meaning and the construction of knowledge. With this step completed, the new knowledge has a better chance to replace the prior knowledge and therefore become a perception of the cells they own instead of just renting for the upcoming test. In the end, the activity did not change, but the setup and the closing for the activity were changed, and the traditional lecture was changed from a dispensing of information to a discussion of the students' experiences. This hands-on activity has now been transformed into a minds-on activity as an integral part of the learning cycle. This final segment of the cycle is crucial as constructing knowledge involves the students actively and self-consciously dealing with the cognitive dissonance between their past experience and their new experiences in collaboration with other learners or the teacher. So if you have truly learned something to the point at which you own it, you have participated in constructivism. In the end, this is how the brain works. If you have knowledge that is deep enough to apply and use, you must have constructed meaning. You've triangulated around that new knowledge and that new knowledge becomes your own knowledge with the prior knowledge, your lived experience, and the accepted knowledge. Our top students do this naturally in the subject that interests them. If you are a teacher, you probably did this too as a student, especially in the subject area you have specialized in. These students, and maybe you as well, were in essence teacher-proof. All you required was the guidance to tell you what to learn. Once pointed in the right direction, you can listen to a lecture, read the text, and then you create your own visualizations, metaphors, mnemonic devices, and so on to move that knowledge from short-term memory and incorporate it into your own worldview. This is constructing meaning. That is constructivism. Our top students do this on their own. Unfortunately, didactic traditional teaching only works the best for the top students, those that are already thinking through the lens of that subject. For me, it was biology. The rest of the students are bored with that subject and maybe all of school, and therefore, at best, memorize what they need so they can rent the information long enough for a test, but then forget it and move on. Teaching using the learning cycle made up of consider, construct, and confirm is one way that a teacher can provide for all of his or her students to structure the curriculum that gives all of the students the opportunity to make meaning, not just the top 10 or 20 percent. In the end, that is our job as a teacher, to make it as easy as possible for as many of our students as possible to learn as much as possible at as high of a level as possible.